everybody welcome back to talk with naya and today we are going to be talking about ashanti so ashanti is an r&b singer and a great songwriter she had big hits like always on time foolish and more with ashanti's early success a lot of people may wonder what happened to ashanti's career it seems that Ashanti was on top in the early 2000s until things took a sharp turn at her record label. But let's back it up a bit and start this from the beginning. Ashanti was born October 1980 and her mother chose her name Ashanti, which means woman of strength and its highest on the totem pole in Ghana. And it also means peace in Indian cultures. And her mother got the name from a movie called Ashanti. Loved it when I heard it. But I said, let me watch the movie first because I need the analogy to be correct mm -hmm. for my daughter. And when they said it means woman of strength, when they said it means woman of strength, and it's the highest on the totem pole in a country, Ghana, for the women in that tribe, I said, that's her name. And I wow. named her a That's Ashanti great. because of that. And she was first discovered as a teenager and got her first record deal at Jive Records at the age of 14 years old. At Jive, they wanted her to be a pop artist, but that didn't align with what Ashanti wanted, which was to be an R&B artist. So that didn't work out too well. Her second deal was at Epic Records, and that fell through after the label was negligent to her after she got into a really bad car accident. Ashanti revealed in an interview that she actually had three failed record deals before she was signed to Murder, Inc. When I had my first record deal, I was 14. I was signed to Jive. Right, mm -hmm. you were signed to Jive, mm -hmm. and then you did this deal. So well, sometimes... actually, like, three record deals later. But oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. It was that many? It was a long... People think that it was just like, hey, I met John. It was on, but no. I had three failed record deals. Actually, Ashanti was going to be on her way to college and was accepted into Hampton and Princeton, but, but deferred, deferred and chose to pursue music. Now, as far as how she got signed to Murder, Inc., she took a meeting with Irv Gotti and signed to him as the only R&B female artist and felt that she had to really prove herself. Ashanti was always writing in the studio and she became a great songwriter and soon became the first female artist to have the top two positions on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart with her songs Foolish and What's Love. Ashanti actually shared that Jay-Z was supposed to be on Foolish, but Irv Gotti changed his mind about the idea and told Jay-Z, never mind. Jay was supposed to be on Foolish. This is what happened. Obviously, I wrote the verses. <clears throat> Irv made the call to Jay, like, yo, I need you to come and get on this record. He said he played it for Jay. Jay loved the record. He was on his way to the studio. Mm -hmm. Then Irv said, you know what? Nah, we're going to do something different because that's the typical R&B move. Ashanti's debut album was released in 2002 when she was 21 years old, which sold over 500,000 copies in the first week. This album earned her eight Billboard Music Awards, two American Music Awards, and a Grammy in 2003 for Best R&B Album. This album is certified triple platinum and sold 6 million copies by the end of 2003. Even though Ashanti had a lot of success with her debut album, she also wrote for other artists and did demos for other artists as well. For instance, the song that went to J-Lo called I'm Real was demoed by Ashanti and Ashanti's vocals actually stayed on the song as well after it went to J-Lo. And Ashanti admitted that she actually wanted this song for herself. Imagine writing hit songs like this and having to give it up to another artist. J-Lo also got another one of Ashanti's songs called Ain't It Funny. And J-Lo lip synced to Ashanti's vocals on this song. Now Ashanti admitted on an interview at The Breakfast Club that she wasn't given a writing credit for Ain't It Funny. And she said that she wasn't signed yet at the time and she was new and didn't know better. And I said, well, actually it was four because wow. I wrote Ain't It Funny for J-Lo. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't get my credit, but I wrote it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know. Did you get your check at least? We got, we got, how do I say this? Yes. <laughs> We're working on other things to make things complete, yeah. but yes. Ashanti had to push back for the records that she wanted, that she actually wrote. For example, Irv Gotti wanted Ashanti to give her song Rescue to J-Lo, but Ashanti fought against it, and that song made it to her debut album. 
Ashanti then released her second album called Chapter 2, and it debuted at number one on Billboard 200 within the first week sales. Ashanti then released her second album called Chapter 2, and it debuted at number one on Billboard 200 with the first week sales of 326,000 and went platinum. However, while Ashanti's music was gaining a lot of success, her label was getting into drama. Ja Rule and 50 Cent got into a beef with each other, which caused listeners to turn away from Murder, Inc.'s artists, and Ashanti got caught in the middle. During this time, Ashanti had to deal with negative comments about her looks, and she was made fun of by 50 Cent for her sideburns, etc. Although Ashanti had hit records, she opened up about opportunities to be on certain songs that just didn't pan out, such as Eve's song called Rock With You. Ashanti turned down this opportunity and openly admits that she regrets it and missed out. She also was supposed to be on Fabulous Song called So Into You and was taken off the song by Irv Gotti and Tamia was kept on the song. I saw Fabulous <laughs> on the Rap Radar podcast. He said that you were on the original version of uh, So Into You? Yeah. Both Irv had said something like, you know, both of us made the decision to not be on it or whatever, whatever. And I was just like, at that time, I wasn't calling the shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I was like, I want to be a part of whatever I'm on. She also mentioned how Keisha Cole wanted to work with her, and she knew nothing about Keisha Cole reaching out to Herb Gotti and telling her no. Eventually, they did get to work together on a song called Woman to Woman and repair their relationship. The two later did a versus battle together as well. After Ashanti's second album, Chapter 2, was released, this was around the same time that Beyonce went solo, and Ashanti faced a lot of comparisons to Beyonce. Murder, Inc.'s empire was also starting to crumble, so it took a while for Ashanti's singles to come out. Ashanti said that she lost out on major deals due to Murder, Inc. being under federal investigations. Ashanti then released her third album called Concrete Rose, with the single Only You being the only single that was promoted. Due to Irv Gotti and the label being in legal trouble, the label couldn't fund her album or promote any singles. Then Ashanti created a compilation album to fulfill her contract and she began to pursue acting. She was in movies like John Tucker Must Die, Coach Carter, Resident Evil Extinction, Honey Girls, The Muppets, Wizard of Oz, Winter Song, and more. If Irv Gotti told the story, he says that Ashanti abandoned Murder, Inc. during the trial and just left them hanging. But Ashanti addressed this by standing up for herself, saying that she went to the trials even when she was working and shouldn't have. And that Murder, Inc. dissolved and she wrote it out. I'm over here doing rock with you. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you know, it, it was it was a very hard position to be in. And even with me feeling like that, I showed up to the court. I supported. I, you know what I'm saying? After the fall of Murder, Inc., Ashanti was offered seven other deals, but they were 360 deals. And she felt that she built too much for them to take money from her. And on top of that, she also had to try to fix burned bridges with people after Murder, Inc. fell through. Even though Ashanti was no longer with Murder, Inc., at this point, there was rumors about her dating life and that her and Irv Gotti had a fling while she was at Murder, Inc. Although Ashanti tends to be very private, the rumor fling with Irv Gotti always seemed to come up in interviews and it even affected her relationship that she had with Nelly due to Irv Gotti's jealousy. Despite the fact that Irv Gotti wasn't the cause for Ashanti and Nelly breakup, after several years of dating, he did several interviews trying to expose their relationship due to Ashanti. Just to add, Nelly and Ashanti broke up due to things that they both did to each other. Although they broke up, Nelly did have 50 Cent apologize to Ashanti for the negative comments that he made about her in the past. However, with Irv Gotti constantly speaking about Ashanti, this led to Ashanti finally addressing the situation between her and Irv Gotti on an interview with Angie Martinez after Irv Gotti continuously spoke on them publicly and decided to bash her in the recent Murder, Inc. documentary, which she declined to be a part of. Yeah, me and Nelly were dating. Mm -hmm. Irv was salty. Irv would not let me come to the studio to record this up. Okay. We're not going to say relationship. We dealt with each other, but having a full, like, was Irv my boyfriend? Was I his girlfriend? Never. During this interview, she also exposed that during her time at Murder, Inc., 
or if Gotti would tell her that no one likes her or wants to work with her and how he blocked opportunities and wanted to hurt her career. In 2014, Ashanti then released the album called Braveheart under her own independent record label company called Written Entertainment with a single called I Got It. Ashanti did open up about how hard it is to have her own label. Is it different owning your own label? It's completely different. Um, it is hard. I mm. will say it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of responsibility, especially being a female. You know, um, there's hair and makeup and glam and other mm. expenses. Right, right, <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. So it, it, it's, it's tough. And she also shared that her mother is her manager and they actually work really well together. Despite how hard it may be for Ashanti to manage it all from her record label to her own career, she has continued to do a lot such as create her own children's book and continue to get movie deals and opportunities to executive produce projects and getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame as well. After all of these years, Ashanti has learned many lessons about the music industry and the importance of ownership. After having her own record label, she shared with the world that she is going to be re-recording her debut album in Toronto due to better advantages for royalties and residuals. Why Toronto to record the album? I chose Toronto because I'm going to drop a little jewel on you. It is so imperative and important as an artist to record internationally. And it has a lot to do with your royalties and your residuals and things like that. She feels that she has paid her dues since her debut album is 20 years old. So she should be able to re-record again and gain more income. However, Irv Gotti was not pleased about Ashanti wanting to re-record her debut album and said that he put Ashanti on. And he believes that she went in the studio and tried to recreate the album and fell short. He also said that she requested the stems of her records for shows, but feels that it's really for her to re-record her album, and also said that she can't spritz it up or jazz it up of the debut album because if she does, then it's not considered a cover and Irv Gotti will have to clear it, and he said that he won't clear it. She wrote them, but she wrote them with the, the help of me telling her what to write. Ashanti, you cannot spritz it up, you cannot jazz it up. The minute you put some spritzy and jazz it up, it's not a cover. So when it's not a cover, now it has to come back to me to clear it. With that being said, Ashanti is still planning to re-record this album and she is still releasing new music to this day with her newest single called Falling For You, which was written by Ashanti in Young Blue. She also released a music video for this track and opens up about whether or not an album will be coming out next. She said on an interview at Hot 97 that she's unsure if she will release an EP or an album due to having a lot of music and she also has to find the time to re-record her debut album. So we shall see if Ashanti releases an album or an EP soon and also she'll be able to re-release her debut album. However this turns out, Ashanti is truly a talented, resilient, and amazing R&B singer that created classic hits that we still enjoy over 20 years later, and I wish her nothing but continued success. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.